Hello everyone, welcome back to Blood Omen. Uh, last time we have made our way through Kane's hometown of Corhagen, and right now our task at hand is to make our way to the keep of the Guardian of the, Pil of the Pillar of the Conflict, to the Malak's Bastion, and take down the Guardian himself, the Paladin Malak. The undead Paladin. Malak's Bastion, perched defiantly on the mountaintop, black as night against the blanket of snow. What manner of man would choose a land so harsh and utterly devoid of life? Okay, actually, I can answer that question. There, now it makes sense. And with that mystery solved, it is time to make our way to the Bastion itself. But not without struggling with the map, of course. Why would we not? I know you are here, demon. The stench of death clings to you. The interior was as cold and sterile as the snow outside, with empty suits of armor and sharp, cruel steel lining the walls. And there is no blood here. And that is why we were uh, hoarding all those hearts of darkness. <coughs> We've collected over 30. And we're not gonna use up all of them, but we will need a lot. Because this place is essentially a labyrinth of traps. My warriors are but shadows of my skill, child. Labyrinth of traps that sometimes require some extremely... Offensively precise timing. Uh, Malak's warriors are undead. They are ghosts fused by Malak to suits of armor, which is reminiscent of what Malak himself is. Uh, Malak is not a human per se, he is a unique wraith, basically just a ghost fused to his suit of armor, which was done by the Necromancer Mortanius back when. Uh, Malak has allegedly, allegedly failed to protect the, the original circle and six of the nine guardians of the pillars, well, six of the nine pillar guardians were killed in the event by the Vampire Borg. The towering metal structure gave birth to these wraiths. I could hazard only a guess at its function. Fusing the souls of long dead warriors to their armor so that they may do battle once again. Life without blood? What a travesty. Do you hope to best me, Cain? Do not worry. Your challenge will not go unmet. Now, speaking of Malak, uh, it is uncertain as to how did he become a guardian of the Pillar of the Conflict. Uh, this is because the lore of uh, Legacy of Cain is self-contradictory in that part. And by the way, here I accidentally enter the wrong door and have to re uh, go through the two these two rooms once again. Doesn't matter. Still, the lore of the games is contradic self-contradictory uh, because, on the one hand, it is stated here in Blood Omen, or well, not in the game itself, but in uh, Silicon Knights' uh, official frequently asked questions, the guide, the official guide to Legacy of Cain, or what it's called. What's it called? I po I posted the link in one of the previous videos that Malak was originally employed as a guardian of the guardians of the pillars as their protector and eventually came to um, represent the pillar of conflict and thus became over time the guardian of the pillar but at the same time as it was established in I think it was Soul River 2 and as I have said before with regard to the Guardians of the Pillars in general, people are born into Guardianship of the Pillars and uh, the decision is essentially made by Pillars themselves. And there is no way to uh, make a... Uh, I have no idea how to resolve this contradiction. But we know for a fact that Malak is a Guardian of the Pillar of the Conflict and that he was a long... Uh, 
He's one of the three survivors of the original attack, alongside Mobi Mobius and Martinius. Your undeath does not make you immortal, vampire. <coughs> We are now approaching the areas where some extremely precise timing is required and now we are gonna die for the first time and use up the, our first Heart of Darkness. The Heart of Darkness And this one is the worst. See for yourself. And you think quick time events are bad. Now, another thing about the uh, warriors that are in service of Malak, it should also be noted that they are these are apparently suits of armor of uh, Seraphon warrior of other Seraphon warrior, warrior priests uh, And not only that in fact their designs in Soul River 2 and especially in defiance are based on these uh, On these sprites of the uh, animated ghosts of uh, former Seraphon warriors Come to slay the Slayer of Vampires, have you? Yes, we have. But remember that... Uh, Malak is an animated suit of armor. It's a ghost covered in metal. You'd think that it would take something more unconventional than just hitting it with a sword to defeat such an opponent. But if his servants are... Any indication, that is not the case, and they can be defeated by conventional means. Or are they? Or can they? I'm actually doing surprisingly well in this part, mostly because, uh, as you can see, I'm spamming flays, and I'm gonna run out of them. But usually by this point I have considered a lot less health than I have here. And also we are about to take down the generator that powers all these uh, wraith producing machines. And by the way, stop right there, stop, stop. Now, compare. This, if anyone doesn't know, is a symbol, is an elemental symbol of darkness from the uh, Soul Reaver 2 and Defiance games. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm absolutely certain that it's a coincidence, but it's there. The globe powered the machinery. With its destruction, the deafening shrieks of the machines ceased to echo throughout the bastion. It was now time to silence the machine's maker. You try my patience, fledgling. 
care to try my blade instead? <sighs> Now, uh, Malak's Bastion doesn't have anything, any items that would be considered secrets uh, for the purposes of the in-game counter, but there is stuff that's easy to miss. My eyes yearned from lack of contrast, my mouth ached for want of blood. In this cold wasteland, food was scarce and my hunger grew. The guards at the gate offered no resistance. They were frozen solid, and dead as they stood, their flesh welded to the cold metal of their armor. It's crap like this why Kane is considered a good guy in this universe. To be honest, I don't really like this part, I don't really like uh, Malak Bastion because it's just uh, all... It's just a blue set of traps, nothing more. With a bunch of un uh, enemies that respawn and that you can't even feed on. And if you don't know to hoard the Hearts of Darkness before playing the game, you're gonna have a hard time here, like I did the first time I played through it. This was another case of uh, a trap that requires extremely precise timing. Now these ones were possible to uh, go through without using the repel, but uh, it would have been impossible to avoid the arrows in that. It would have been impossible to avoid the arrows, and as such I have decided that it's better to waste magical energy than to waste health. as to why was I so relentless in trying to kill that specific uh, warrior, ghost, priest, ghost of warrior priest. I know they're ghost fused to armor, that's it. So close, but in the end I do get hit by a swinging, was it X? Oh. 
A corpse held court on a tattered throne, grinning malignantly at me through blackened teeth. It is not often that a man sees his own corpse. It is a sobering experience. But I am far less interested in my own corpse than I am in yours. Prepare yourself, vampire! Well, preparing ourselves is exactly what we're going to do right now. Uh, Malak just has to give Kane tactical advice. So, uh, this corpse is heavily implied here to be uh, Malak's corpse. But I call bullshit. Because uh, if you remember the cutscene in the beginning of the game, uh, and it will be confirmed later in the game, by, well, in game, there will be other place with Malak's corpse. And hilariously, the official guide for Blood Omen considers, well, refers to both of these corpses as Malak's corpse. And now we encounter Malak himself, and the appropriate way to approach him is to hit him with a sword. Yeah. That's that. Well, except not really. In fact, he's only susceptible to the uh, final attack of this combo, of this four strike combo, when uh, Kane screams out Vey Victus. And as such, what we need to do is to ensure that the first two slashes don't hit anything. So we're not gonna defeat him by hitting him with a sword. No, we're gonna defeat him by swinging our sword through the air. Yes, it is as it sounds. Now it's just this on rinse and repeat. The fight against Nopraptor was more exciting, at least that one required me to think about my route and... Uh, and that one had balls of yarn flying at me. Like, that was the ultimate boss fight. This one is boring. <laughs> Bay Victor! <laughs> and this wall of energy is essentially a deus ex machina to so to ensure that Cain does not kill Malak. Havoc and malice, their presence in my hands keeps me from employing magic. Yet rest assured, they do little to hamper my relish for slaughter. Axes are whatever, we just use them to cut down trees. It would seem Malak's destiny with my blade was postponed. Perhaps Ariel could offer further guidance. Perhaps. Now, originally that scene was supposed to be the destruction of Malak's Bastion, but now it was just an energy wave to repel Cain. Ah, the Lord returns empty-handed. Does the Seraphim elude you? Very well, go east of Malak's Bastion. The Oracle shall give you aid. And that is one of the few, uh, few cases in the game when we are going to employ our access. But in any event, uh, turns out that Kane can't kill uh, Malak with a sword. No, instead we're going to have to employ a more unconventional method. Iron up, spawn the, the axes. But in reality, Malak will go down only to a Deus Ex Machina spoiler. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye. of 
darkness. The heart of darkness. of darkness. <laughs> the heart of darkness. <laughs> <laughs>